right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokori, your host, and I have yet another car review to show you today. I have this lovely 2023 Lexus RZ 450e. This is their first all-electric offering. It's based on the same platform that the Toyota BZ4X and the uh, Subaru Solterra is on. It's a shared common platform that they developed for all of these brands' first all-electric vehicles. So I have the Lexus version, which is Toyota's upscale brand. So it's going to be a little nicer than the BZ4X with a lot more luxuries and appointments and that kind of stuff, which I'll talk about in a little bit. First, I want to thank Toyota Canada again for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days. Uh, always appreciate when the um, OEMs allow me some press vehicles so that I can drive and give you a review. So let me try to get this in before it gets too hot today because we're going to get a nice hot sunny day. So let me tell you my thoughts on this beautiful machine. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the shared platform with those other uh, models and brands. Of course, now Lexus has beefed up their design language, incorporating, of course, their grill-like features in the, in the front for the looks. Uh, this looks a little better because it doesn't have the grill slots, right, for the ventilation because you don't need them on this all-electric. So it actually blends pretty nice. And with this two-tone paint scheme that they have here, which is an optional couple of grand on this particular vehicle, uh, my wife actually commented that this kind of gives her the Thundercats look. You know, remember Thundercats? Oh, Leo. Yeah. Anyway, kind of gives it that look. And when you look at the design with the, the frame, the, 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 the bullish kind of staunch that this thing has, I could, I could relate it to the feline Thundercats uh, element. I could certainly see that in the way it looks. It's a nice design. It's uh, polarizing, but to the point of, of luxury and some sophistication and classiness that Lexus does have. Incorporates, of course, all the nods to their current brands so that when you look at this vehicle, even if you didn't have the logo on it, you would see that it's a Lexus. So I do like the design. The color scheme on this is really, really nice. It's got the 20-inch wheels because it is the top trim package, which is something I personally wouldn't get, but then I'll tell you a little bit why later on. But overall, the design, the lights, everything that's in this package looks, looks and works extremely well, and it looks very nice. And uh, people that have been into this vehicle and have seen this vehicle have commented on the looks that it's a very pleasant vehicle and it's a very nice design that Lexus has incorporated into their first all-electric offering. So when we talk about some of the specifications on this vehicle, it's a decent spec vehicle. It's got a battery pack of 71.4 kilowatt hours, which is a decent size. However, as you know, in looking at some of the Toyota products, and I haven't tested the Subaru, so I can't comment on that, but the range that you would think you would get with those battery packs are a little bit less than what they probably should be if it's coming from some other manufacturer. So, and power is, uh, it's a dual motor, so you get all wheel drive standard out of the box with these, uh, with any of the trim levels uh, of the uh, RZ450E. Combined power from the dual motors is 308 horsepower and torque is 320 pound feet. It's really enough to get you up and going. Like I, I repeatedly say on all electrics, they have lots of torque and uh, I think zero to 60 times are somewhere in the 4.8 to five second range, 4.6, uh, which is very, very reasonable. Uh, and for a vehicle of, of this kind of compact SUV-ish type look, everything is a crossover compact SUV now almost. Um, so, cause it does sit higher and you get good visibility. So it's, it's very uh, capable of getting up to speed and passing and doing those maneuvers relatively easily. Now, as I mentioned, it is an all-wheel drive system, and Lexus calls it their Direct 4 uh, configuration. So it does um, uh, get the power, as I mentioned, from that battery pack. And with that range and power output that you can get, uh, EPA-rated range is, uh, the, there's a couple of different trims. If you get the base signature trim, uh, which has 18-inch wheels, EPA-rated range is 354 kilometers or 220 miles. If you get the uh, luxury or executive trim, which is the next the two trims up, they come with 20 inch wheels, which is on my tester here. This is an executive trim tester model. And with the 20 inch wheels, your range drops to, 100, uh, to, sorry, to 315 kilometers or 196 miles. So um, as I said at the beginning, I love the looks of the 20 inch. I think they're really nice. They, they ride comfortable, but I personally, to get longer range on this vehicle would opt for the 18 and maybe not all the niceties that you can get with some of the higher end packages, but that would just be me. From a charging perspective, it is nice that it has a charging port up front here. And uh, as you can see by the close up and everything, it's just your standard CCS combo configuration, right? 
Um, they have, uh, I forget if Toyota said if they're going NACS, I think they are because pretty well everybody is in the future. But for now, these will come with CCS uh, combo ports and it has your nice features here. So pretty easy. Again, some people like the frontal located, more of the frontal located charging ports because they can drive into a charging spot versus like with Tesla's, we have to back into them. Uh, again, with practice folks, it doesn't really matter, but a lot of the OEMs are, are putting their charging ports more in the front quarter part or front third of the vehicle to make it easier for that purpose. So it does, it is a nice location for that. Now for charging speeds, it's a little bit lacking in what we would call today's main specs. And that's probably the, the you know, the, the summary that I would say, the same thing I said with the BZ4X, you know, it's a great vehicle, same with this, but some of the tech is a little, is a few years back, you know, like four, three, four, five years ago, this would have been the standard or normal, but at 6.6 .6 kilowatts for AC uh, level, uh, level one, a level two onboard charging that's a little lean by today's comparison so it still means that you can you know you have plenty of time overnight uh in uh, you know eight to, to ten hours something like that to charge this thing up to full if you need to from zero so most people you're never going to get down to zero in one day but plenty of time overnight to take advantage of off-peak rates and and cheaper charging rates for that time period now if you do road tripping and i think that's probably where one of the weaknesses potentially is in this vehicle, not in the charging, but in the overall range and then charging when you look at that experience. And let me explain it. It has a peak DC fast charging rate of 150 kilowatts. And I'm gonna put up here a charging curve that I got off the internet for somebody that did one. And you could see it actually does get close to that peak rate of 150 in, again, but in idea situations, which is what these peak rates are based on, 150 is pretty well achievable. It peaks pretty close, but then it does drop down. And when you get to 80%, it drops pretty well, really, really down. So the thing about this vehicle is, is, is it will do 10 to 80% in about 35 minutes, which is just slightly over where the normal is today of about that 20 to 30 minute time frame, but it's not that bad. What that means is that if you're only looking at about a 300 kilometer range, you know, 330 on the best side, but when you're highway driving and road tripping, you know, you're doing 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, 110 kilometers, 115, kind of going with the flow uh, in Canada here. Uh, that 300 kilometers now becomes about 220, maybe 240. You get some range loss just by moving at higher speeds, even if you say 250. So that means you're going to drive for about two and a half hours or so. You're going to stop and you're going to stop for 30 to 45 minutes and then you're going to rinse and repeat you know on a normal outing so wherever you're going that you're going to need you know more than more than uh, calculate how many stops that's roughly from an experience what you're charging and what your road trip is going to be like now if you're okay with that experience and most people are then this is a fine vehicle to take on road trips as a city commuter, uh, going back and forth to work, that's all I've been doing this uh, this week. I've charged it one day and I've gone four days without even charging it. And I'm still got lots of charge because I'm just going back and forth to work and doing errands and stuff. So for my normal day, this thing will last. I wouldn't have to charge it every day, maybe once a week or twice a week in, in the winter, probably. Right. So for road tripping, though, again, that that's kind of what your experience is going to look like. So I just want you to be aware of that. So I'm not knocking this vehicle that it's a bad road tripping car because it's not. It's very comfortable. It's very quiet. It's got nice appointments. It's a great vehicle to drive. It's very, very pleasant. But if you're okay with that experience, if you know, like it's, this is, isn't going to be an Ionic 5 or Ionic 6 experience where you're going to stop and get that 10 to 80 in, in actually 18 to 20 minutes. This is going to take you 35 to 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, depending on circumstances, right? So you've got to be aware of that. And that's where Lexus, Toyota, Subaru are a few years back. You know, that, that was kind of the normal four or five years ago, but now we're getting to these faster charging rates, supporting in excess of 200 kilowatts, 250 kilowatts, up to 350 kilowatts. That's kind of the new norm. And when you come out with something that peaks at 150 and has a little bit longer of a charging curve, it's a little bit lower than what the standard is, but just a little bit again, it depends on your experience. Uh, so that's what I'm going to, you know, kind of summarize from a charging and from an overall road trip experience, because you may see some videos and people are bashing this. Uh, it's not a great road trip car. It's got lousy range. I would disagree with that. I still think this is an excellent vehicle. Uh, it's a little pricey for what you get from a range perspective, but depends on what package you get. And I'll talk about pricing on the end. So hopefully this information helps you in uh, trying to get some ideas of what this, of how this vehicle could work for you.
So here's the interior. Uh, it's a very nice dash layout. I believe it's a seven inch driver's binnacle, um, 12 or 14 inch infotainment system. Typical Toyota-ish uh, infotainment, right? You got, got a bunch of different settings. You can set up uh, your profile, lots of different settings. There's not a lot of EV information. You can do charging schedules. Um, what else can you do on the EV stuff? There's not a, really a lot of information that this gives you. The app is actually pretty good for giving you a, a little bit more information than the actual display does. Um, but, you know, the sound system is nice. Uh, it's been upgraded, of course, uh, on this in this uh, top trim. Uh, you got some USB ports. Don't The screen flickering is just a shutter rate on the camera, so it doesn't flicker. You've got heated seats, cooled seats, uh, touch controls for the HVAC, which are decent. Uh, they're kind of easy to get to and not that complicated. You can go into a more robust climate menu and some options there if you want. Uh, the rotary controls for temperatures and, of course, for your fan, some USB, as I mentioned. Uh, cup holders are nice and flat. I like that. Easy to get cup holders in. Some storage here. Decent glove, glove box storage uh, over here, if you can see. Um, not a lot. Like, this is it. There is no glove box, so the, just a console storage because this has the uh, heated uh, ambient heat for the legs options just like the Toyota had and uh, I assume this Subaru has so there is no glove box here so only only storage you have is here in this console and then you have a little cubby underneath here which is where we put which is where Lexus puts the owner's manual and, and the papers because there is no glove box so that's what you get here you do get a nice uh, uh, you know top screen one thing that's cool is it's got the electromagnetic sunroof uh, there is a word for that. So you press the button, it clears, press it again, and it goes cloudy. So no need for any fabric shades. One thing I wanted to say is the cameras on here are really, really nice. So I'm just driving into my, or close to my garage, and if I put it in drive, and then I go up, you'll see that the camera, front camera will start coming on as I get close to the garage door and start bonging at me. So it gives you uh, not only the annoying bong noise, but it, it highlights in different colors where you're approaching some of the closer areas. So it's a nice camera system, very good colors and very, and, and people walk by. I've been stopped at a light and you know, I'm the first one at the light and somebody walks by and it goes off and it tracks them with the, the yellow uh, markers next to them so it's interesting if i use the reversing camera here then here you go you still have the 360 view you can change your views and then you can see it's got this bong 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 that that lets you know that you're in reverse and to look it's a really nice camera system they've done a good job on here i like all the audio warnings they can be annoying but they're very helpful and here in the re rear seat again um not a whole lot going on it's a very comfortable environment i'm not a huge fan of this kind of suede Alcantara fabric here going on. I'm not sure how it's going to hold up. It's very comfortable. Um, they do have cooling seats, so because they can get quite warm. I'd prefer cloth seats personally if I had that choice. So I think in the trim down, you can get that, but it's nicely equipped. You know, you've got these electronic door uh, actuators. You push it and then the door pops open. Uh, so that's kind of cool. There's a manual, so you can pull it to manually open as well. Get your cup holders and of course your roof here. So it's a very pleasant environment back here for four, for five in a pinch. Got some separate HVAC, some heated seats in this option. Again, it's an, uh, this trim, it's, a, it's an option, so you have to check that. Overall, a very nice package that Lexus put together. Uh, build quality is excellent, fit and finish, use of materials is really nice. All right, so let's see how it is to get into this thing. Uh, nice, fairly wide doors. They're not 90 degrees, but they're pretty decent. And let's get in. Yeah, don't have to bend down too much. Grab handles, which is nice. Again, as I said, very nice interior. I've got the seat where I have it, and I have, oh, two-fifths of leg room, so lots of leg room. Very comfortable. Again, the materials, I'm not sure how they're going to stand up over a long course of time, but that's me. They're, it's very comfortable, very nice. Everything's easy to reach. It's a comfortable environment. The armrests, the LED lights for map reading and that kind of stuff, and, of course, the, the changing uh, sunroof is, is a very, very nice panoramic roof. So, yeah. Good job on the uh, interior again and the, the rear. Now from a cargo capacity, it's fairly well equipped. It's got a nice power tailgate here. If I open that up, got to press the right button. There we go. There is a fob and you can do it from the inside as well. But it's got a pretty nice tailgate. I've got it set a little lower again for my garage because I don't want to balk the door. But you can see if I push it up to its full availability, it goes off the screen and it goes pretty high. So it's nice. It's a good size boot, uh, a little bit of a high lift over, but not too bad for loading packages and stuff. It's got good room here. Uh, I'll show you some close up with this provides a cargo net that's actually in this package here, I guess. It's just in this storage container where you could spread out the cargo net if you wanted. It's got a good size well on it as well for storing, uh, for storing stuff. So the official size of the cargo capacity uh, behind the second row here 
is 35 uh, cubic feet or 991 liters. If I put the second row down, it's a 60-40 split. Then I increase the cargo capacity to 48 cubic feet or 1,359 liters. So a good use of cargo space for those Costco runs, Ikea runs, whatever the case is. You can certainly put a lot in here. I will add that there is no frunk on this, so it's just the motor and the electronics and everything that's there. Um, and uh, again, I've shown you a picture of that, so there is no, no frunk on what this uh, vehicle has. It doesn't have that. So again, if that's important to you, this doesn't have it. All right, now that I've gone over and shown you the vehicle and talked a lot about the specs, let's go for a quick drive. So here's my driving thoughts on the uh, Lexus product. Unfortunately, the video that I had recorded in car had some sound issues. So I'm just doing a quick, uh, give you my thoughts over this monologue, over this uh, B-roll driving video here. Um, safe to say the car was, is extremely pleasant to drive. It's very quiet. It's very comfortable. It's a very capable vehicle from an all electric. It's a Lexus quality, so there's no squeaks and rattles. Everything fits together. Everything has a nice sound to it and, and, and is quiet. Um, the motors, you don't hear the, uh, the electric motors while you're driving. The handling is quite well. It's a very uh, plush ride, but not to the point of being floating. You feel a bit of the road. Now, these have the 20-inch tires, so they're a little louder than I would suspect the 18-inch tires to be. But it wouldn't impact ride quality um, with the 18s, in my opinion, because the suspension is very nice, capable of soft enough to take most of the, the bad road conditions and potholes and stuff, uh, yet uh, capable and competent enough to allow you to still feel the road and grip the road. The brakes are good. Now, one thing this does not have is, is full one pedal driving. It will allow you to put on max regen, which will take you to almost a stop, but probably, you know, about five to 10 feet when the last five to 10 feet where you'd have to use the foot pedal, the brake pedal to actually take yourself to a stop and then hold you there as well. Now there is a hold button that will stop the car and activate the brakes, but it takes a bit of like a split second once you actually stop before the hold engages. And sometimes I, when I was trying to use the hold, I found myself releasing the brake pedal a bit too early, thinking the hold was engaged and it wasn't. So it's very similar to the experience in the BZ4X and, and not surprisingly, because they're, they're sharing basically similar systems uh, in, those, in these vehicles, right, that have the same platform. Um, I like the, the comfort level of the Lexus better than the Toyota product, of course, because it is a Lexus. Uh, everything fits very nice, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, infotainment is okay. It's nothing outstanding, in my opinion, but it does the job. It's got good connectivity to, to the phone um, and to the music stations. It's a nice sounding stereo system as well. So from a driving and overall ergonomic feel, it's a very comfortable car vehicle to drive. It's a very capable, again, going long distances. It will be very nice uh, spending, you know, a couple hours a day stuck in traffic as we do here in the Toronto area, trying to get uh, to work and, and from home sometimes uh, back to home. It takes a while. So it's a nice, pleasant environment to be in. Some journalists have mentioned and commented about the, the lack of feel or the, the hesitation in the steer by wire system that this has. Um, now this has the round steering wheel. It doesn't have the yoke. So, uh, but I, my uh, my understanding is the same uh, steering system. I didn't really find any issues at all. And I drove this around for a week and did you know parking in malls and and backing up into my home and exiting and going into driveways out of driving spots and this kind of stuff. So I didn't have any issues in steering the vehicle and having any delays or having to worry about the the the, the vehicle to catch up to my movements in the wheel. Um, if there is, it's, to me, it's very minimal, and I just drove the vehicle and didn't have any problems to, to think about. So I think some of the journalists that are driving this are making too big of a deal of that. I don't think there's any issues, but again, I would encourage people to get into a vehicle, take it for a test drive, and try out uh, your senses. I mean, if you're going to go to a track and do slaloms, you might experience something like that. Uh, but that's not what this vehicle is for. It's to get you from A to B in a very nice, comfortable manner on on in all electric format. And I think Lexus has done a great job. Just wanted to quickly talk about the range for a sec here on the instrumentation, uh, and I'll refer to it later as well. Sure, as you can see on this trip, I'm averaging just under 18 uh, kilowatt hours per 100. And I'll have a summary at the end of what, uh, what I do. Done uh, 187 kilometers, 156 showing left. Now, what the funny thing is, as I mentioned, um, to talk about on the software here, and I'll talk about it again, is when you put on the climate control, even just, I don't have the AC on, right? AC's off. If I just put the fan on one, there's no AC, right? I can, you know, leave this down at a number where it's not going to put the AC on, just the vents coming on. 
So I've done that. Now you'll see that my range has dropped to 128. If I turn it off again, see the range goes to 156. Left on the, it's on the right hand side there, the remaining number. If I put it on again, just to level one fan speed, drops down to 128. In fact, when I had the vehicle, it was dropping about 50 kilometers uh, up high to higher states of charge. Just by putting the fan on, the HVAC, just the fan, not the AC or the heater or anything else. It doesn't take that kind of a big hit if you put the uh, heated seats on or the cooling seats on. It doesn't recognize that. But just when you put the, the HVAC fan on, I'll shut it off again here. and You can see that it'll go back to 156. So I'm not sure what Toyota is doing, what Lexus is doing in the software mapping here, because that's a big hit. There's no way just putting the fan on is going to drop 30 or 40 or 50 kilometers off of your range. I could see if you're running AC the whole time and, and the compressor and everything's going, but that's a pretty big drop. So again, I think that they're being ultra conservative in their range estimates, trying to get, give you on the low side so that you can overachieve on that. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, if I look at the numbers, I've got, you know, almost 200 with 150 left, that's 350. That's pretty well bang on to the EPA rated range. But you know, if I put the, the climate control on, I lose 30 to, you know, 20 to 50 kilometers of range just by doing that alone. And, and some other car reviewers have, have talked about that. And I don't, I don't think it actually does impact the overall range that much. It just, it, it's a sudden kind of drop that will take people that don't know EVs, especially new owners, it'll take them by surprise. And they may think, well, I just lost, you know, up to 50 kilometers of range by turning that on. And I don't think you actually, the reality is you'll lose that much range in reality. So I hope Toyota kind of, and Lexus fixes that because it's probably the same on the Solterra as well. I haven't I haven't seen the Solterra uh, displays or the HVAC system, but I'm guessing that the mapping, the software mapping is probably all around the same um, using the same algorithms and everything. So um, just be cognizant of that, that if you put the climate control on, you'll see an immediate range loss of up to 50 kilometers anyway that I saw when I first got this vehicle, just by putting the fan on, never mind activating anything that's going to be more uh, drawing more power from the uh, from the battery system, uh, like a HVAC, uh, like AC or, or uh, heavy heat loads or anything like that, rear window defoggers, all this kind of stuff that take more heat. So be cognizant of that and uh, just understand what they're doing. So just trying out the lane keeping and the adaptive cruise control here in the Lexus RZ450e. I've got it set, as you can see here on the screen, it's a little sunny, uh, and I'm on my usual nice quiet highway. So, oh, okay, so uh, I will be blocking the sensor here. This red thing here is the face sensor, and it's very sensitive. If you look away for a couple of seconds, it uh, doesn't like it. So I gotta do this when I'm not blocking it. So let me put it up in the middle here. So I'm not touching the wheel now. We're in a nice, slow, gradual turn here to the left, and it's maintaining the speed the distance uh, from the car in front of me and staying in lane quite nicely. It's a little windy today, so uh, we're not really getting blown, blown around, so that's good. Um, the vehicle is slowing down. Of course, now it's asked me to grab the wheel, so that what was that, about 15, 20 seconds, I guess, of, uh, of unattended or not holding on to the wheel driving. So, decent system, works pretty well. Again, these are designed to real, uh, alleviate the stress of long distance driving, not to be used solely on their own. So hope you enjoyed that information. This is again, a very pleasant vehicle, a nice experience to drive. So from a pricing perspective, um, this is where some people are gonna think now, if you're a Lexus uh, customer already, you're gonna love this because it has that high-end quality, it has sophistication, it's very well built, it's solid. Uh, it's got nice appointments and it's a very comfortable experience and a vehicle to be in and drive. So you're going to love this vehicle. But if you're comparing the pricing to others out there, you're going to have to think a little bit more. Um, this comes here in Canada. It's offered in three trim levels. It's offered in the signature trim, which is the base, uh, the, the lowest model you can get. That uh, base MSRP starts at 64950 Not a bad price. And I believe it does qualify for the 5K federal incentive and for probably some local, provincial, uh, and state incentives in the US as well. Not a bad price when you compare it to Model Y, to Ionic 5, uh, GV60 from Genesis, and uh, Kia V6, I guess, if you're gonna lump in the Ionic 5. Those kind of vehicles in that class and size. VF8 from VinFast, potentially, right? It's in that uh, price point. This is a similar size vehicle that the BZ4X, its sibling, the Solterra, its sibling, right? 
there, there's some competition in there that you can check out the pricing. It's not bad. When you start adding more appointments though and getting into more luxurious trim levels, you go into the luxury model, which has a base of $73,550, and that's uh, that comes with the 20-inch wheels and some other appointments. And then you go to the full spec that this model is, the executive trim, and its base MSRP is now $80,950. And that's loaded, as you see here, with everything um, with the 20-inch wheels as well. Now, as I said earlier, because of the range, $80,000 for 300 kilometers of usable range, roughly, right, 320, let's say, on a good day, uh, I'll show you what my range summary is coming up after this. I'll plug it in because I'm still not done, but I'll plug it in uh, into the show and I'll let, see, let you know what it is. Um, but it's, it's very interesting because um, it, it, the, the computer that calculates the range, I'm not sure what they're doing. Obviously, they're on the conservative side, which again, as I mentioned in the BZ4X video, is Toyota's hallmark. They're not going to want you to stress the battery out. They're going to be ultra conservative in what they tell you. They'd rather themselves look better than worse. So my point though is on the pricing for 300 and something kilometers at that price point, boy, there's a lot of other vehicles out there that have much higher ranges. So it's, it's an interesting issue, I guess, if you want to say that Lexus has put themselves into at that price point. 80,000 is a lot. And if I was looking to spend 80,000, I don't know if I'd go into something like this because my, my need is more range and, and the ability to faster charge because I do more road trips than, than probably most people. Uh, or a good amount of people, so that's important to me. But if you love the Lexus brand, the build quality, this thing will last a long time. There's no doubt in my mind, it's extremely well built and appointed. And you're using it primarily as an urban commuter, not to say you can't do road trips. If I wanted to take this to Windsor tomorrow, I could. I'd have to stop once somewhere, probably at an Ivy on the 401 highway on the on routes or something for half an hour or so get the Windsor and then repeat the same way coming back. I could do it quite easily in this weather. It's not a challenge. But um, if you're going to go longer than that and really super long road trips, you have to think about what I said earlier. And then if you're willing to spend that kind of money for this, it is a nice appointment. It rides 10 times better than the Model Y does. It's quieter. It's got much better appointments in the Model Y, but it doesn't have near the efficiency or range or even the, the get up and go that the Model Y has if I use that as a direct comparison for the class. So just some stuff to think about. Again, Lexus pricing is higher than the other brands. I get it, it's a luxury brand. That's how they're gonna come out with, but just something for you to consider as well. Take a minute just to look at the real world range. This is my driving chart. So as you can see, I didn't put a ton of kilometers on it, put on about 260 over a four day period that I've had the vehicle. I started with 100% state of charge, ended up at 29% state of charge. Uh, temperatures are relatively nice all week in the 22 to 24 degrees C with getting down to the mid-teens at night, but most of my driving was during the day and into the early evening. As you can see what the starting battery range showed me from a range of 319, and I ended up with 93 kilometers of range showing uh, on the on the projected uh, information. Now to get the actual percentages, I had to go on the app because it doesn't show the percentage on the display, which is something I pointed out on the BZ4X. Uh, maybe there's a software update coming for the Lexus as well, but it did tell me what my ending state of charge was. So uh, through the app, it actually shows you that. So uh, it projected 226 kilometers. I did 259, so more is better, 33 kilometers more. So that means it's under it's underrating the projection uh, and efficiency of 17 and a half decent, which is okay for this time of year and for that kind of vehicle. So pretty decent, comfortable to say that you'll get some decent ranges if you just drive normally. So to wrap up this episode, do I recommend this vehicle? Absolutely. Yes. You know, again, I'm, I'm all for plug-in vehicles. I'd love people to go more into all electrics than plug-in vehicles. And when you look at the stats, by the way, folks, from a global sales, about 70 to 75% of all the plug-in sales that happen globally are for all electric vehicles. So people are not worried about range anxiety. They're not worried about some of the things that we hear from people that are considering a move to electrified platform and uh, don't are scared about going all electric. The majority of, of, of sales out there are for all electrics because the technology works, it's very solid. And once you get in and understand it, the nuances around it, you're not gonna be scared and it's actually a pleasant experience to have all around. And that's what this vehicle is. So certainly recommend it. It's a great vehicle, drives really nice, all the stuff that I've said. Um, again, it's, their, it's Lexus' first EV effort. So they've done 
Good things, again, some of the rivals can offer more power, more range, and faster charging again. So when you're considering this vehicle, you, got, you have to look at what your needs are. Um, all right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts and coverage on this beautiful 2023 Lexus RZ 450e All Electric from there, their first offering. Great vehicle. Uh, I did have a chance to drive this for a bit at Eco Run in April for about an hour or so, but now that I've had a few days to spend with it, I can really form a much better opinion on it, and it is very positive. Thanks again very much for watching. Thank you again to Toyota Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle. I always appreciate that, as I mentioned. All my specs coming up at the end of the show, how to contact me, and the thank you, of course, to my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. I certainly appreciate that. If you're interested in supporting me, it would mean a lot if you want to help me. Even five bucks a month or something like that it doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, as some people are doing two bucks a month, whatever you, you think you want to do, you can check out the Patreon uh, information coming up at the end of the show. And, and support me if you wish. Uh, please subscribe if you have it and all that stuff. So again, thank you very much for watching. Everybody stay safe and until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.